Yo, what's going on guys? Core Masters here, and in today's video I'm going to show you something that probably makes me the most excited that I've ever been about in Koala Sampler. I've been working on trying to figure out how to do this for so long. I made some posts about it, I asked questions about it, um, but I found something that works and I'm just really, really excited. Um, so, YouTube. In order to get YouTube or any source of music into Koala Sampler, you either need to have the files already and import them in File Explorer, which is perfectly fine, but for a lot of people that like, you know, crate digging and looking around and seeing what's available on YouTube or even Spotify and then wanting to like sample these songs, for me, the process of looking for the song, doing a screen recording, um, importing a video, compressing the video, and then, and then getting the song there was very frustrating. I did not enjoy that uh, at all because it took a while and then it takes up storage and you have to remember to delete it from your files. I don't know about you guys, for me, it was just not fun to do. I hated it a lot. What we have here is a way to alleviate that. What I was trying to figure out is I wanted to be able to either take my phone or another iPad and just browse YouTube and find a song and then be able to press and hold the pad while the song is playing and let it pick up, let it like uh, record onto the pad that way. And I finally figured out how to do it. I'm going to show you guys right now. Now, this video hopefully will inspire some of y'all to try this with your configuration. I'm using my Yamaha uh, P515 digital piano, which is like my home base. I'm a chord guy. So I need to be at this piano when I'm making music. Forget being somewhere else. Forget making stuff only on the iPad when I have access to the piano. This is how I make music. Um, so instead of like thinking about like uh, working over there with just my iPad and just, uh, you know, other gear and stuff, I wanted to find a way to make everything here work together. That's kind of another part. I'll probably do a separate video on specifically that. But I'm connected via USB-C to U USB printer cable uh, on my Yamaha digital piano. And I have USB-C connected to the iPad and it's sending both... Um, data, so MIDI data, as well as audio data, right? And what I'm doing here is this digital piano is capable of handling Bluetooth uh, audio. So I'm connected via my uh, phone to Bluetooth, and now if I go to YouTube and find like a little clip of a song, like um, Beethoven, I'm just thinking of Beethoven because I feel like that won't be flagged for... Um, you know, copyright. So if I click it, so now the interesting thing here, I have this playing. Now, at first, I'm going to pause it. At first, I was like, I don't see the meter going up. What is going on? Then immediately I remembered that on my keyboard, there is a section called uh, utility and then audio loopback. So in order to get this to work properly, audio loopback needs to be turned on. And when audio loopback is turned on, as you can see, and I hit play, turn the volume up. So now if I swipe up and I'm going to let this play, it's going to capture the audio. That's good enough. And there it is. Normalize it. All right. So, that's incredible because now I can do what I've been wanting to do in this app for so long, which is I've wanted to be able to just browse music and just quickly find something that's inspiring and then put it to the pad straight away um, rather than doing these other things in order to do that. So that's the first thing I want to talk about in this video. I'm very excited that I have this figured out. The next thing I want to talk about is drums. So this is another specific to chord master thing, but again, it might inspire some of you guys. But um, when it comes to drums, you know, there's ways that a lot of people use this. They import drum samples into uh, into Koala, 
and and then finger drum, which is cool, and I've done that, and it's fun, but I have a lot of drums that I've programmed that are better than anything that I'm probably capable of being able to finger drum or even sequence with a standard sequencer in like like is in Koala. So I'll give you an example, and I finish my statement. I have that type of stuff in my on my OPZ that I've I've spent a lot of time making music on it. So, um, so let me explain kind of what I, what I'm what I was kind of working on here. So if I go to sequence and I turn on my so a couple things now I need to I need to turn off loop back because if I turn on the metronome. Let me uh, turn this. This is too many vibrations. There, it's not cool. <laughs> All right. Um, if I turn the metronome on and audio loopback is turned on, uh, hang on. Let me come here. So when that's going on, as you can see, it's it's going to capture that. So if I try to record here, right? We don't want the met. We don't want the metronome recorded. So audio loopback now is going to be turned off. Same thing not going up anymore, right? So now what I would do is say to myself, all right, so if I wanted to record a chord progression, I want to record a chord progression in here, I might go in and I might get a tempo going and bring this down. tempo so I might come over here and be like I might come in here and I might go to, I don't know why I keep saying I might. Let's go to like, I think that's four bars. And so I have this going. This should, should be a perfect loop. Let's see. So that's good, right? So you have that loop going. Now you want to add drums to this. Now I would think, and this is what I'm still kind of exploring and figuring out. But if I go into Koala, I'm sorry, into my OPZ and find any drum beat on here that I like, so so this is good here. Here's a drum beat, and what I would do is I'm gonna instead of like importing this in and then doing time stretching and stuff, I'm gonna look at my sequence tempo, which is 80 BPM, and I'm going to put. Well, I think in this, well, actually, yeah, let's see. Let's go to a metronome. So this is set to 110. So I'm going to change this to 80. And now, that might not be the best example. Let me find another drum uh, pattern on here. Let's see. Yeah, this is good. So this is set to 80 now, and I might take this sample out. And a lot of different things you can do, but in here, if I wanted to, um, let's see, go to the master track. Well, in any case, I, I don't I don't like that drum beat either actually. Well, in any case, you find a drum beat that you like. These are all tempos that are set differently, so when you slow them down, they kind of sound a little weird to me. That's why I'm, like, hesitating. But um, let's go here. 
and let's go back to 80. So that's fine. So if I wanted to bring this in, let's bring, let's go to sample. I can swipe up. So now we can hit that, we can normalize it. And we can actually bring all this over and we can kind of get this to like right about there maybe. Why didn't it loop? Yeah, so that's good. Something about that is not right because that's set to 80. Okay. That doesn't sound like it. It's actually right. So it's almost exact. But the idea here is that you can use drums that you've sequenced somewhere else and get them cleaner than I just demonstrated, but that's okay. I like doing these kind of live, spontaneous videos uh, to kind of work through different things. Someone commented on one of my older videos and said they enjoyed that. Um, but you can also, if you don't like the way that's sounding, you can also go in here and let's like uh, auto chop this. So we can chop something. We can do this. All right, let's go in here. Let's take this out. So maybe. So very excited about this. And now this workflow just gets much better, right? I have these two pieces of equipment, which I didn't demonstrate in this video, but this is the off-grid MIDI controller, which is, I believe, the best portable MIDI controller available, period, today. And we have this, the noise machine MIDI controller, which I believe is the most, is the smallest and one of the most fun to use. Why fun? Because you can stand up and just create a beat with one hand and it's a lot of fun to do and i'm going to do some more demonstrations with these two products i'm going to leave a link below if you guys are interested in getting 10 percent off on either of those um there's a link use there's a link that you can use to get 10 percent off i get a little commission for that of course that's what this whole thing is right you know the affiliate links and stuff but i'm only working with products that i'm really really excited about and ones that i actually genuinely use um i i'll i won't say i'll never accept money from a company or from a service or something that, that I don't use. Um, if the, if the bag is like heavy, like I I'll accept it, but I, I want to make sure that I'm, that I'm just being as genuine as possible on the channel. I think that's the most important thing to me, but essentially we have everything that we need here. Um, I'm going to be talking a lot more about Koala, you know, moving forward. I'm very excited about this app, excited to be using everything here. We even have the OP one over here that I didn't demonstrate today in this video, but we can do the same stuff, right? Incorporating sounds from the OP1 into Koala now and not being at a loss of how to get sounds into this app. We have YouTube for sampling. We have drums from the OPZ. We have interesting, crazy soundscapes from here. Um, and then we have my piano. So at this point, 
I'm set to make some incredible stuff and I'm excited to do that and I'm excited to share. It's probably a little darker here, but that's okay. I had a 32 gig um, memory card in there, actually this one, but thankfully most of what I needed to get across was recorded. Only like the last like two minutes or something like that uh, wasn't recorded, but I have a 120 gig in there now. I just wanted to say that I appreciate you guys watching the video so much and I'm really excited about this new setup that I have and being able to hopefully inspire some of you guys to work within your limitations of whatever platform it is that you're using and really try to um, appreciate the fact that everything, every platform, every piece of equipment can't do everything and there are ways to work around like I, d I demonstrated in today's video. Once you find something like that, it's it's just really exciting. You discover, I kind of discovered this. I mean, I wonder, I don't know if anyone else is sampling from YouTube this way. Maybe, maybe not. But now here's a, in my opinion, a much easier, more elegant way to do it than screen sharing. So appreciate you guys. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. Hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in more content like this and smash the like button um, and all that good stuff. So I will catch you guys later. I just got a message, that's why I got distracted, but that's okay. I'll catch you guys later and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. All right, peace.